It looks like it connected to the DM screen instead of the uh, player screen. Okay. Alright, so I need to make sure what day it is. <clears throat> so, we started at Fool's Bluff, we ended up here. Then you made your way here, and then the way here. So it was yeah. Tuesday morning when you woke up. So it was Wednesday, and then it's Thursday. Which means that it's technically Friday morning now -ish. Am I correct? Okay. Uh, yeah. So... So it'll happen tomorrow morning. Well, technically, you're already setting up for camp, and you know it'll happen tomorrow. Oh, we're resting for... Yeah, you, you just okay. made it there. The fight starts. You haven't actually gone to sleep yet. Oh, okay. We're doing a rest in at, and then going into Saturday morning. Okay. okay. Well, actually, I, I, the, the, I fire, the fire happens at Friday morning. It's Thursday night right now. So when you sleep and you wake up, uh, it'll be Friday. It morning. happens Saturday. Uh, let's see, was it Saturday or was it Friday? It was Saturday. It was Saturday. Saturday? Okay, then I'm off by then. So yeah, you're you're good for another day. Okay. Good you, the biggest issue was that you're still near the uh, the desert. Near the desert. Area, you know? Yeah. So yeah, you have one more day before you see the fireworks happen. Okay, I call last watch next rest. <laughs> I want to watch the world burn. <laughs> That's not Speaking very fire maniac, you, but okay. Yeah. Okay. Taking initiative, getting rid of the turn over here. <coughs> so, the creature has died. It is turned into a five pound soul gem, um, which. Uh, what are you guys going to do with that? You're just going to stick it in the cart? You're going to keep it on your person? I can keep it in the cart. You're going to stick oh. it in his chest and see if something magical happens to it. <laughs> no, I was just put it on my back. Alright, that's... That's a huge shoulder. At, at, at some point, I need to you know, figure out some actual music for this game. Alright, let's see if it's working. Because I don't hear anything, do you guys? Uh... I actually have, like, the rest of the sound off. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I have mine on, but I don't hear anything. Yeah, I have mine off as well. I always get echo if I have both on. Uh, can you turn it on for a moment and see if you hear anything? Sure. Can I, I can switch. It's going to my headset. Okay. I just... For mother sound only. Yeah, it's on. Nope, I got no music. Yeah, neither do I. Yeah, it's a little odd, but alright. Uh, yesterday, or Wednesday. Yeah. Or so. Wednesday it worked, but for some reason these auto's are not working today. Okay. Oh well. We'll have to deal with that. <coughs> okay. So, what do you guys want to do? It was, I believe, Ryan's watch uh, when this thing just came at you. Well, actually, no. I realized what we should be doing. What we should be doing. So, I have a tradition in my games when it's someone's birthday that the person will roll. A D1000 for each year they're, they've aged. Technically, you've aged one year, but I'm talking about in total. So you're 26, so roll me 26 D1000. All of us? <laughs> no, him. Yeah. Right, it's the one who's. <clears throat> Happy birthday, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know what? We I've done this enough times, and no one's rolled a thousand yet. You think that someone would eventually. Oh boy! Nope. Did he actually? Oh, 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 that is so close. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, he did get one, didn't he? I got uh, a nine nine nine. Close enough. He's off no, by one point. One thirty one though. Oh no, he got a ninety eight. <clears throat> okay, so the reason why I had you roll is on your birthday you will receive one item from the list. And I will read you the, the items, and you will decide between the items. <gasps> so this is a long, length, lengthy list. So take your time, make your decision. Did you have oh, one? Is, are Did these you have out, one of out of the Dungeon Master's Guide? It's one out of the list that I made. Oh, okay. All right. So it's gonna it's gonna take a little while. <clears throat> so okay. I'm also gonna have to bring up a list to write these down. Everybody's gonna forget all of them. I didn't get to roll on my birthday. When was your birthday? December fourth. Well then. 
You should yeah, roll two. All right, you want to do that? We can do that. Yeah, so if you got the list up anyways. Okay, uh, let's see. How old is my character? I don't remember. Your age. Okay. No, no, you. Out if of you character. like to roll your, your character's age, go ahead. I'm 48. It's gonna, It might take a little while to do it, but I don't mind. You only get one item, though. Okay, okay, go ahead. Uh, all right, so... If you uh, go ahead and roll, but we're going to do his first, and we do yours second. Horatio, when is your birthday? Uh, 7th July. Yeah. Okay, because uh, I was going right to say, it's, like, the it's year. like next week. Might as well do it now. <laughs> I rolled a 6. Oh, that's... Well, I, I'm pretty sure you're not going to end a 6. You also got a 19. Yeah. I got your, a lot of your highest numbers. is 981, I believe. 989. Uh, yeah, you got 989. I just saw that too. 989. What's the 899? Oh, actually, uh, 989. Uh, you got 110 and 193. You're like on both sides of 100. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is gonna be a while. So let's take our time and see if we can make this work out in any way that makes sense. Realistically, these items are just gonna spawn. This is meta. This. Not like in character kind of thing. This is literally just falling out of the sky in yours now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and to note, I completely like blanked out on on Wednesday when we were saying let's play on Saturday. That Saturday was my birthday. I completely forgot. <laughs> I just wanted to play D and D again. Hey, oh, it's not fine, man. Hey, I mean, I I played D and D for my birthday as well a while back. Pick the first way to spend your birthday. No, yeah, this is aw I love playing D and D. This is an awesome way to spend my birthday. I also got off work like at seven a.m. today, and it's eleven thirty for me a.m. still. So after this, I'm just gonna sleep and then go back to work. Really? Yep. Did you want to? <laughs> well, uh, I guess if you if you if you made sure you had enough time to sleep, then it won't be an issue, I suppose. Oh yeah. I I doubt we're gonna play for the next twelve hours. We could. I, I doubt it. <laughs> May have to take an hour break in there to grab something to eat, but I guess <laughs> as long as we're done by ten thirty at night. Oh my god! Could we? <laughs> it's tempting. <laughs> why is that so tempting? Because oh it's enjoyable. I, There's a reason why we enjoy D and D, and that's. I pulled we all enjoy D and D, so if we get the opportunity, we'll play. You know, immediately we have other stuff to do. We have other stuff to do, but when we don't, we're gonna level up today. Uh, level can up you like tell me years. what? <laughs> I just want to know what nine 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 was specifically. What that number got me? All right. Okay, let's see. I know I have nine 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 marked a well while back. Let me see if we can find it. I'm really curious about that one specifically. It's not that one. It's one of the swords. Let me see if I can find it. <gasps> oh my god, I got another sword. I don't know, man. That one you got's pretty solid, dude. I wouldn't mess with that thing. It is really awesome, but I could have a backup and, like,. Witcher it. <laughs> just have two on my back. There's no reason why you can't have two swords. <laughs> There's like a legit reason to have two swords. If you if you run creatures that are a lot of creatures that are weak against silver, why not have two swords? You know, like a silver sword is not gonna last forever. But when you need it, you can just pull it out and have it ready. Personally I always go with a silver dagger as backup, you know? Mm. Always a good plan. As a matter of fact, it's always a good idea to silver your weapons if you ever have the time and the money. Well, you also have Just, a blacksmith with you. He can do it if you have the silver coins to melt down. Yeah. And that's so much I've cheaper than having an absolute blacksmith do it, you know? Oh, I, damn! I like having arson. Oh, that is... Well, that might not be oh, the best for oh, you. What the, it's, it's, what it's, the better, it's, it's, better for, it's better for a spellcaster. But uh, it's it's still oh. good. It's still good. Um, they're, they're, it's essentially the Blades of Chaos from God of War. <laughs> what is it? So, the God of War, the game, Kratos. <laughs> you, he has those like swords strapped to his arms with chains. Those are called the Blades of Chaos. Which chain? 
Haven't you played God of War? For the PS PlayStation, yeah, two and three. It's a PlayStation. Yeah. Give me a oh, was it on computer? Basically, though? they're slightly no, cursed. It actually was uh, moved over to computers at that point. Also, there's a Skype update now, which I should do at some point. Right, where are my dice? Uh, every time you update, every, every time, time it updates, updates, it gets worse. I update Skype, I have issues. Yeah, I had some issues just yesterday. Uh, apparently, the host had updated, no one else did. So, when the call was made, the only person we could see in the call was him. But we were all could hear each other, but we couldn't see anyone else in the call but this guy. And we couldn't even like turn off the call, only he could turn off the call. If we tried to leave, it just stayed on. Okay. So, I need you to roll me something for the D9, uh, for the 999. And I will tell you what it does in a moment. Other than that, you can't physically drop an item that's attached to your arm. Ooh. Okay. Yep. Alright, uh, roll me a 100. And then uh, one? a 1d100 one and then a d8. Slash roll space one D eight. Okay. Well, I don't know why that took three times for me to do. Don't know either. So eighty eight and seven. I was so close to eighty eight and eight. <laughs> okay then. And a seven. <clears throat> I say this is going to take a while. I'm not kidding, guys. It's going to be a lengthy so, bit. Do we need to do something like this for each item? No, it's just this one specific item. Oh, okay. Because it's crazy. Oh, is that you, the nine? Oh, this is... It, okay, fine. That's going to be hilarious, actually. Oh, man. No, I'm, I'm, so I'm pretty sure you're going to like it. But you also can't physically remove it from your body. <laughs> If I choose to take it? If you choose to take it, you can't actually remove it anymore. It, it stays on you. When you put it down, it just reattaches to your body somewhere. You know, like the change will... They'll stay on your back if you want them on your back. They'll stay on your arms if you want them on your arms. But if you try to drop them, they'll just hang there. The chains themselves cannot be cut, you know, except in the form of someone trying to kill you. Okay. It's the only, it, it will keep attached to you as best it can. You'll still take damage, you know? It's not going to yeah. count as armor if someone were to like hack it in your arm or something. Alright. I will tell, I'll tell you what it does in a moment. I just need to look this up. It's kind of a good thing that we did this because it's off. It's, it's technically on stream, but it's off in the point where no one's going to be sitting here complaining that we're sitting here yeah. doing this for, for a lengthy bit of time. Yeah, mm -hmm. unless you want to hear our you know, special banter you know, back and forth, I would suggest you fast forward through this. <laughs> yeah. um, you know what? Click this guys, link. If you guys want to RP for a little bit, go ahead while I do this. You guys are just you know, sitting around camp. You just kills a few things. I can't believe, Brock. Rock, what did, why, would you, why would you run away and just let all these people of fool's bluff die? We didn't let them. We warned the guilds. We told people. If, yes, but we also could have possibly stopped it from happening. Period. How, how, how can we stop a desert from catching fire? Uh, you know what? I don't know, but it would have been nice to find out. I. Oh, plus one other thing. 
Once we sell this bow, if it's at all possible, I'd like to call dibs on the chest it came in. <laughs> I assume they need that to yeah, transport they, it. They kind of need the chest as well. Well, let's see what happens when we get there. You never know. Weird things may happen. Somebody might accidentally touch the bow and then dun dun dum As he wakes the talent. <laughs> yeah, touch it. Touch it. Sure. It's I guess it's, it's I suppose it's possible. And if it well, doesn't happen, were to happen, I don't anyone be around to complain about you taking a chest. I mean, come on. I mean, all it takes is a pair of gloves, a pair of goggles, Talon's there sleeping on the ground. You pick up the chest, you dump it over right on top of him just to see what happens. I'm saying this, you know? Mm. <laughs> right. I wanted help, but realistically, how could we have? We've told people, we've warned people, we got some people out already. Like, look how much panic caused just from not uh, just from water being gone for a few hours. Yeah, but uh, like when there's I, rivers and lakes and oceans nearby. I, but I see now a town like that survives on its water, though, and I can understand that. And that, as I said, I'm a still a pretty firm believer that that's what actually what the Magic Guild did. They did it to go ahead and because I mean, what's going to happen? I mean, look at what happened when I said, you know. This whole place is going to burn by Saturday. I mean, Hank, who liked us, thought I was an idiot. I can under I can completely understand why they did that, and if 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 they did that, that was damn smart. You know what? If they did that, yes, brilliant of them, and they've taken care of it. We they didn't need us anymore. We would have caused panic. Yeah, but at least there would have been some place to go back to. Now the question is, once we get back, if we ever come back, will there ever be a fool's bluff again? And we were starting to make some pretty darn nice acquaintances there. As a matter of fact, I, I was kind of like, I know you and I were kind of like both looking at that female cleric and think, wondering. <laughs> <laughs> there was, there was uh, three other females in that party. I know, three guys. An all-female party? They had an all-female party. Yep. Party, and they were all they were they were all very charismatic, and they took off right away. Yeah, at least the two we met. I think we met all three, but we only really interacted with two of them. Uh, it was a four man party. You didn't meet one of them. So four girls. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. He, 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 even even you know Draco, who's ended up you know drunk all the time, probably would have ended up with somebody. One of them could have been a drinker. Exactly. But they uh, they left before we can even give them a warning. I know, I know, which I was kind of bummed out about. Which is good in its own way. At least it got alive. Well, let's put it this way. If we already know where the blacksmith is going to be, if there is no more Fool's Bluff, I would like to go ahead and hook back up with Hank. Because Hank owes us a big one. For uh, uh, selling them to get out. Well, well that and also helping it, you know, helping him there at the end, taking care of his, you know, squishies uh, while the, uh, you know, all the raiding and uh, pillaging was going on. Well, not really raiding. What, what, it was. What, it was kind of raiding. That was. That was a pretty hectic night. Well, what do you? I mean, like, what do you call that? Uh, it's um, besides just mass chaos. Uh, like riot. Yeah. From the riot. So yeah, uh, I couldn't I couldn't grab the word and pull it in. Uh, <laughs> you know, some of these relationships we've made, I'd like to keep going for down the road. Just a simple fact, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. I I, I look forward to seeing Gary again. He's uh he's already shown me uh, a few uh, a few things about crafting magical items uh, when I watched him uh, make the shields. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that he didn't outright say it, but just from the job we're on right now, he may deal in a little black market magical goods. Um, you you know, your character is um, not your character, uh, Gideon, but Rook. Yep. He did say that he's come across things like this before, and he will typically buy them and will sell them in other methods and other forms, but he won't deal with them 
in his shop, you know. Yeah, it's, he'll... Uh, it's a little dangerous. Traders Guild that we're, like, kind of doing contract for right now. So he or has... Was it he, Guild? he likely has some connections. The fact that someone was willing to sell this thing to, to this old guy. He probably has a few connections, but he wants to keep... To an key. elf across the, like, the world, really. Yeah. He, he, he's got some, some communications. Yeah. Rook wouldn't really, really put that together. He'd just be like, cool, yeah, quest. <laughs> Actually, I'll I'm do a favor for you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to a, I'm looking forward to a sea journey. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah, me too, honestly. I'm, I'm like, shark bear or something's going to happen. I mean, a lot of people do sea adventures and stuff like that, but, you know, really, do you get to hit the whole gambit when you're, you know, in a world? I mean, a lot of the times it's just dungeon crawls, you know? I, I, yeah, I really like the whole open world thing. That's like, before we started the game. Like when I was reading that the whole description of it. Like, yeah, not like, to mention thought, the fact it was thought. I can tell it was, it was thought out. It didn't it didn't go into too much detail into it, but like there was uh, the original was, concept for this world. I made it back in middle school, oh, shit. and uh, I've out. been gradually building up from here. And typically, what I do is I'll like I'll make the general theme of the world, the mechanics that I want in place, and then I will typically move things around, because the, the concept of no resurrection, there's a reason for that. You guys don't know what it is yet, but there's a reason for that. There's, there's a reason why you, you can't come back to life. It means that there's something going on with the concept of how D&D works, where you can resurrect, or your soul goes somewhere and you can bring it back. It's not able to come back, and there's a clearly there's a reason why you should look into it. And then there's also a concept of, like, if if it's not a re concept of reincarnation, where's your soul going, and how is it coming back, in what are method in which in order for people to continue being alive? Right. There's some freaking deity that's okay. Hey, guys, gotta bring all the souls. I'm, I'm gonna pretty sure about it. I'm gonna do a bio real quick, guys. Okay. Right, go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna blow my nose. <laughs> One second. Alright, I'm only keeping the ones that are you know, actually magical. Ones that are just like normal items are kind of pointless to you, right? But not OP items. <laughs> okay. Um, did you figure out what that 999 does? Yes, I did. Blades of Chaos. Uh, Blades of Chaos. Wouldn't putting that concept on the game make them like cursed? Because they would be, you know, like brave. They are cursed. That's flesh. why you can't remove them. <laughs> well, yeah, the curse is they're bound to you for. Yeah. With chains buried in your arms. Damn. Right. From real quick, I'll be back. When, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, guys. We have oh, um, when people actually get back, I'm going to quickly explain the uh, the rules for magic items and whatnot. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if I actually mentioned it before. Hopefully I did, but it's also possible that I did. Uh, I, believe I, I was just it going off on basic D&D &D rules in my head. I'm not sure if you specified anything else. I specified it first session, but first session oh. was a little hectic, you know? Yeah. Typically they yeah. are. We we went pretty right into it, too. Which, you know, it's all equally as fun. You know, we go and I gradually explain certain things as we go from there, and like, in a way, the first the first time where you all die, that definitely explained quite a bit. And the idea that, you know, creatures can be harv harvested for, you know, Items and equipment, stuff like that. It's explained by the fact that you literally got it off one. Yeah. And typically, when it when the switching comes, the first time the situation co comes up, I'll explain it to you and tell you it's an option. And I want you guys to understand that those, that's an option for all creatures. You can attempt to, for like a squirrel. I don't know what you're gonna get out of a squirrel, man. You probably get like a really a tiny finger glove. Good luck with that. I don't know what you're gonna do with it. 
but you can harvest items from creatures you kill and stuff like that. I'm, and the reason why you should know that is you've literally done it before. Yeah. yeah. I like, um, I really, really like having some type of artisan skill for D&D. It just adds that extra depth to it. And then that past time in the city, too. Like, you actually want time in the city and time out in the dungeon instead of... If you don't, your character just, like, is... And, and if you guys say in a town, the quest board will change periodically, and maybe a different quest will come up, or maybe one that you were waiting on will be gone. Yeah, you know, it gives you the, like a risk reward situation. Yeah, not to mention the political intrigue in the in the uh, giant city. I mean, come on, imagine what would happen if, for some reason, the three rulers of the city found out we had Bob. <laughs> you, you are so screwed, man. Like he's a there's a reason why you wanted to keep him in secret for so long, and that's someone wanted him dead to begin with. So when yeah. they find out he's still alive, what are they gonna do to you? Oh, exactly, exactly. I mean, come on, man. I I gotta tell you, I am play the crazy card. <laughs> having Bob, <laughs> having Bob makes me paranoid as hell. And you guys sitting there all of a sudden making friends with him, I'm uh, I'm I'm hey, well, getting close to terrified. We're, Wait, you've been friends with him for how long? Why can't we? Well, you know what? It's all. It's not about that Bob isn't powerful. It's just you have to realize Bob is a shitload more powerful than we are, and the boy has ulterior motives. Who's to say that these things, the, the portents and stuff that he's giving me, aren't things of his own creation? Have you asked him? Huh? I could. <laughs> Do you really want to risk that? Exactly. That's because if it, if he is, if he really is doing it, and you you realize this, you found out, and are actually going to question it on it. What would he actually do to you? Yeah, you almost have to worry about. Uh, th that's one of the big things that I'm having issues with. Is the simple fact, Jesus, if Bob knows everything I'm thinking, I'm you know he's going to destroy me. So you know what I'm actually saying and to you guys and what I actually ask him and stuff has been very clipped. Well, if I don't, like, how long how long have you had Bob? I've had Bob for about, th uh, let's see, I started getting visions when I was 14. I probably had Bob since I was about 17 or 18, which means I've had him for about uh, four years. That, okay, is, so, um, that is correct. Okay. So, like, uh, how could you have gotten away with having Bob for four years and not giving him <coughs> anything, and yet he gives you visions? Because Bob has his own ulterior motives. But if he's not gaining anything out of you by giving you visions, why would he continue to do so? Well, how do I know he's not gaining anything? That's yeah. the trick of it. All these little things he's telling me may be things that are furthering his ends more... Do you feel than... different? Yeah. Making a ripple effect kind of a thing? Yes, exactly. Setting th starting to set up his dominoes for the long game. Well, let's put it this way. He, he essentially prevented a small town of people dying. How is that that negative? It seems good, doesn't it? It seems good, but then again, that's one thing that I worry about with Bob, that no matter how much good I do, that essentially in the long run, I'm doing evil. Gideon, I think you should put paranoia on your character sheet. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, with Bob, it, I mean, why, why do you think I haven't used Bob extensively and just told you guys about it? I'm extremely paranoid with this. Can you actually... Use him for something. I, Technically, I, he can ask him to do so, but there's always okay. that give and take situation. Right, he's gonna want something every time he we ask him to do something. Like I spoke, I spoke to him about the red dragon and stuff down in the dungeon we were at down south. There's things along those lines. I'm just using him extremely minimally. Information. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. This this is actually the first time in you know the campaign that he's actually come to the forefront majorly. That's why I felt it was actually needed that you guys knew about him. And now that you know about him, it's actually making me even more paranoid. I've been secretly thinking about dis trying to dispose of him while we're on the ship. He reads your mind. Don't do it. I don't think that's a good idea. Well, of course you guys don't. Look at what he does. He also, you also see him flutter around. 
So uh, I don't know how, how you're going to do it. He also yeah. cast an illusion to like give himself a body in the bar, too. Exactly. So he can cast spells of some yeah. sort in, in, in a dead form. He is ungodly powerful. I don't know why you guys aren't paranoid about him. That's the thing. Well, let's well, let's see. From, you, all, you all heard rumors about these three guys who theoretically control the major city in the center of the map. Um, and that they've been alive for a unknown amount of time. Thousands upon thousands. Maybe they switched out with other people over time and no one's known. But the only time you've heard of anyone switching out that's publicly known is one guy. And that guy replaced this guy, when Bob. And that was like widespread knowledge when it happened. People freaked out, wondering what the hell was going to happen to the city. Oh, you mean so it's, it could uh, conceivably almost be like a, a Dread Pirate Roberts situation where somebody just be, keeps on becoming Dread Pirates Roberts. Yeah, it's equal, it, that is a possibility. But the fact that you're holding what I, uh, one of you will realize at some point or research into it, that this guy, Bob, is a demi lynch, which means yes. that theoretically, if he was a lynch, it's also possible that's the reason why they all live for so long, they're all lynches who are controlling the entire population of almost the entire planet. Everyone, in a way, worked for these three guys. People in other out outlying cities, you know, are typically cities that gather resources or do certain things and then ship product to the city. It's like this little, like the town that Zavalon came from, made made metals and like crafted weapons. But typically, the the major buyer of all your product was like the city guard or mm -hmm. the other people from the city. Yeah. Now you understand why I was so paranoid about everybody about anybody else getting their hands on Bob. Oh, uh, one other thing. Guys, uh, just sit here. The party inventory and the unsorted loot. Let's go ahead and update that because I actually want to take uh, one uh, of these sheets and turn it into a contacts list since we were talking about Hank, Gary, and the girl group, you know? Stuff like that. Party inventory to... Uh, you guys have uh, the access apples. and ability to edit, so you're free to change it as you desire. It's really uh, just there already... you guys look at it. Your thing. The party's unsorted loot? I already updated that one. Okay, what about party inventory two? Uh, uh, wasn't that for the first party? Yeah. Well, yeah you can, but you we can, got the stuff. Yeah, it's from the first party. You can go ahead and delete that and just change it to whatever you want. Gemma's um, portrait is gone because it went uh, non-magical. Yeah. Well, yeah. You also uh, sold it, I believe, already, so it's not even up to uh, We gave yeah. it to Felix after it had no use. What about the six opals? We're still dealing with that, correct? We still have the six opals. And you are carrying those, correct? Yes, because they started bouncing around. All right, so why don't you go ahead and I, I will put that into my inventory. Then. Okay, what about the glowing orb? We gave. Did we give that to... Uh, we gave it to Lily. Sister? Yes. To Lila. Lila. So that is off of our... Okay, so our party inventory two is now clear. I'm going to turn it into a contacts list, Bob. Uh, he's doing his thing, and we're just chatting, okay? Okay. Uh contact list you mean like yes like right now i'm putting in hank the barkeep uh, uh he, yeah he you know he ran um match the matchstick in in fool's blood uh felix the rich sneak oh yeah i forgot about him uh gary the old blacksmith okay oh, hey, i can only, i can only type so fast sorry <laughs> no problem okay hank the barkeep matchstick in fool's bluff Oh, you're putting in everything. Okay. Yeah. Where they were, how we met them, how they feel about us. Uh, like, honestly. Uh, like. I, I think Hank likes us. Uh, so yeah, do we. So. We've been good to him, and I've tipped him pretty hard, too. Yeah, we, we, like I said, I think he's he been tipped good. We were. We paid ahead of time for, like, rooms and meals and stuff, and. You also told him that the town was going to burn, so he would leave. We told him the town's going to burn. We protected his staff while the riot was going on. Exactly. So, yeah, I think, uh, I don't want to say good he's terms. our debt, but he's feeling pretty good towards us. Good terms. 
Yeah, good contact. Put it down like that. <coughs> and then Felix okay. after that. Okay, we're doing Felix next? Yeah. Okay, I was going to pop in Gary, but... Okay, Felix. I, you know, I'm not quite sure how how he feels about us. Uh, I think he's just fun, kind of indifferent. We were just hired hands, and we did a job. Yeah, exactly. But you know, you never know. He did. Ha he had some cash. All depends really on how much he made it out of Fool's Bluff with. Uh, he didn't really need to. Like his house was like cobblestone and like smooth stone and. Right. So and that's he had to some wood, though. That building itself probably survived. Then it just—it's just a point of whether or not Fool's Bluff ever comes back. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to leave him blank for now until we figure out a better way to put it. And now we got Gary, the old blacksmith, because he's an old guy. Right. His grandkids that apparently don't like him, or don't um, visit him much. They don't visit. The, they don't visit or don't like interact with him much. He's like that old guy who lives just slightly out of the way, so you don't want to make that trip, even uh, even though you should, because he's an old guy, you should take care of him. But well, isn't no he like a big travel away from his grandkids? Well, he lives in Fool's Bluff relative to them living less than a few days south. You know. Oh, it's only a few days south. Yeah. Well, it's technically by horse three or four days south. You know, over there. It's it's okay. yeah it's slightly it's slightly farther south than that dungeon we were in because I didn't you say he was on that uh, wait a second what's the name of the town I'm sitting there South, south? Hard. yeah yeah South Hard. that's where well we it took us four days from that lake right that lake is four days away mm -hmm. Something like that, yeah oh on foot but like by uh, horse it's still not that long it's just yeah you just don't visit it's kind of a, it's like if you were that old and you just like wait around for your grandkids to show up, but they never do. Like, what the hell, guys? It's also possible he's just a bad. crazy <laughs> old man. Come on, he, he has, like, end-of-the-world supplies. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> he's prepared. He you know what? He's seen shit. He was prepared for that riot. So he's seen those before. Yeah. What's the name of that town he's in? South what? South Park. South South Hard. Yeah. Well, his shop was in Fool's Bluff. His, right. He went uh, to South Hard for... I'm just put down his current location is South Hard that we know of, and... Uh, we're, on, we're on pretty good terms with him, too. He was yeah. showing me blacksmithing. Uh, he made those shields for us. Right. I, I put down that you are on excellent terms with him. He's a quest giver. Current location is South Heart and possible black marketer. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save it here. If anybody wants to put in Tim Solo character, sister character, and then we also got the uh, girl group. Let's just let's just uh, what do we call? Them? Let's call them the Go Go's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Go Go's. That'll work. We don't even have a party name where we're other naming other parties. Exactly, but that's half the fun, you know, giving people weird names like that, like uh, the Frog Brothers and stuff like that. Yeah, it's Frog as well Brothers. just got well, Josie and the Pussycats. Yeah, yep, there you go. There's a good name. Uh, it's like, but, but I don't think the Frog Brothers are feeling very uh, benevolent towards us right now. Well, you did just ditch them. Yeah, like, totally. straight up. It's like, you, you know for a fact that they're waiting for you in that area. When the fire goes off, they're dead. Well, one less problem well, to worry about. Hook. Most of them, it's possible that the, the big guy will survive, but the big guy also would have lost the children that he was carrying around with him. So if he survives, he wants blood. Oh, dude, that, hey. just, that just gave me a major karma hit then. We could have... I'm okay with that. We could have been stopped by the fire. Oh, well, we're sure you you're supposed okay to come back like after a day or so to, get, to meet up with them. So they, they waited around. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you can't say you were held up by the fire when he waited a while, and you guys traveled like four days already. So he's been there waiting for four days for you to show up, and then the fire would go off. 
Oh, I doubt he's been there the whole four days. He, I he think he's already would. waiting for guidance, man. He, he, he doesn't know where he's going to get these supplies, and he was counting on you guys to help him out there. Oh, let's put it this way. Would he know when the curse was taken off of me? He, he removed he the curse himself. What's that? He, he, he both cast the curse on you and then removed it when you, when you uh, complained about it. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, that's right. That's right. I thought it was still on me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the main thing that was detected is that you previously had a curse, and they were right. trying to determine if that curse was affecting your, affecting your mental state. It was obviously, just a track taking, curse. Yeah, obviously you're taking much better notes than I am. Okay, so we put down the Frog Brothers as, you know, they want to kill us. For good reason, mind you. Yeah, I know. P Ruck is sitting there compromising all of my ideals. I'm going to blame it all on him. <laughs> you didn't want to go back. Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, even ever since we got back to Fool's Bluff, I'm been, I've been saying that we still have the Frog Brothers situation that needs to be taken care of. That wasn't by your choice, though. That was... You just gave him a wasn't word by your so he'd choice. let you leave. Someone decided to take up a quest, and then you decided not to go there. Yeah. Well, the original intent was actually to go south, meet up with them, and then continue delivering the chest. But we went north instead for whatever reason. <laughs> Whose fault was that? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, someone, maybe someone needs who, to roll better under survival checks. Who rolled that survival? Blame them. We're looking Italian. <laughs> it's Tally's fault. Everything is Tally's fault. Yeah, it, one who it was Tally who made that roll. In the wrong direction. <laughs> I can't say this is a day of trouble, though. <laughs> for quest. You don't. You know what? When the world is about to light on fire, you don't waste time backtracking. No, no. Then I can say this. It should be, mm. be thankful. Nah, I'm still going to manage to blame it on you. And I'm still going to put this word out there. I'm just putting it out there. You never, ever want to mention the dead kid to Gideon. I think that's a very good idea. Yeah, that's, that's, oh, the self-drowning kid. Yeah. Mm. You don't want to mention you ever saw that body down there. Meta. <laughs> He made that he made that statement and he's gonna stick to it. Are we uh is, is that list almost done? I'm really excited. <laughs> it's almost done. Okay. Just take okay. your time, guys. Do you think? <laughs> um well actually since for the wash, uh we, we killed that thing. Uh uh I started my watch in the desert next to that earth elemental. Right. Then we moved. I continued my watch. This guy showed up. So how long of my watch was all of this? <clears throat> okay. So your watch was interrupted um, near the end. So you went four hours. And then okay. as you were about to wake up someone else, uh, the, the skull, Bob, tells you that it's, it's, it came back to life. Or something okay. like that. It, it was trying to it's trying he to tell you that. Coming. Yeah, it's coming. That, that that's that's what he said. And I said, "What is it?" He said, "It's back." Yeah. There you go. I I I think you just forgot the name of it, but uh, he never really get, like you don't know a name, and this I, yeah. Bob doesn't know a name either. It's We're saying, not really sure what it was. In the monster exactly. manual, it's a death slot, and that's you know that's out of game. It's yeah. in the monster manual noted as a death slot. That could have been a, like a really cool nemesis of ours. <laughs> and then you manage to kill it because you have a thing that can kill immortals, essentially. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm sitting Slayer solid. Of gods. I'm sitting solid on gold, gold, so I don't think that uh, we're gonna have an issue with booking passage on the ship. Uh, uh, I uh, even after all that spending, I still have two hundred thirty-five gold. Oh boy, you went through a lot, didn't you? Uh, yeah. Well, I bought four health potions. That was two hundred gold alone. Yeah. Well, that's true. I'm because I'm sitting on eight forty three plus some gold and silver or copper and silver. Yeah. 
which reminds me, I probably need to switch that over to gems. Um, now, uh, what's the plan with the soul gem, Italian? Uh He said he was holding on to it. Okay, so we're not gonna, we're not going to convert it to cash for now. Might be more useful in the long run. What um, are we? You guys would know that items that require charges or that have no way to replenish their own charges typically use soul gems to re replenish them. Oh, okay. So, yeah, this is actually worth some cash, especially due to its size. Yeah. Yes. Every time you use it, it will slightly decrease in size. So, could he potentially use that to recharge his bow? Um, There's no need his bow that. will recharge every day. Right? Yeah, With but could he, like, but could in he a, use... In a worst-case situa situation, he could pull it out and take an a as an action, recharge his bow. That's interesting. Now, can a soul gem be used to uh, simulate a, uh, a long rest? Unfortunately, no. Okay. Okay. No. Oh, this is it. Does it won't replenish you physically, just items for the most part. Okay. Uh, I have another question. Yes. Would Bob be interested in the in making more soul gems? It's not your choice. Do you ask him? He's uh, technically there with you guys. Well, I would yeah. like to ask him and Talion, kind of, if. So you don't include Gideon in this talk. Well, we're all here. Um, but I direct it towards Talion and Bob. Um, Bob will say that he has no particular interest in soul gems. Okay. He does, they have he five does more go hours. on to say that you know in a past life he was more interested in such things, but in his current form they're they're useless for uh, for him. Well, uh, what kind of materials? Should we start with with your skeleton? I assume the rest of your skeleton. He he gets a little nerdy when he's talking about how the body is. To, he's talking cybernetics at this point, guys. Because he, he's Shit. he's from higher up, where like up there at the top in the top tiers of the towers, it's a fantasy sci-fi universe. They probably have spaceships. You, you guys just never seen them. You guys. That's very bottom. complicated, Bob. You, you're you guys are like. Compared to him, he sees you as like dirty monkeys. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. exactly. And you guys want to be his friend. I want to be everyone's friend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tell that to Ru tell that tell that to the Frog Brothers. <laughs> uh, well, they tell that to Lila. You wanted to leave in a burning city. No, no, no. <laughs> and I wanted to leave her. I was just curious because I came back and all of a sudden we had a new party member that you're all in love with. Am not. R2? Am not. <laughs> I, I just imagined this conversation happening like with her like less than <laughs> five feet away. Like, what the hell? <laughs> That's exactly right here. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's so annoying. I lost track. I'm... Can I fix it? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, 7.33 is... Okay. Oh, uh, next level is going to be interesting. Uh, I get a... It's not great, but it's really workable. I get absorb elements for myself or anybody within 30 feet of me. So if anybody gets hit by, like, fire or something, take half damage from it. It's a reaction. So pretty nice. You can have the reaction much. on to someone else? Yes, I can. So would you absorb half, or would the person you cast it on? No, uh, it's a reaction. So, like, say you get hit with a fireball, but the rest yeah. of us stay out of it. I can go ahead and cast it on you, or I can use it as a reaction, so you only take half damage. Um, what are you attempting to do? Oh, it's, uh, it's the absorb element uh, feature from... Uh, Level six cleric, uh, um, nature cleric. Okay. When you bring it up, it's, I was first thing that came to mind was the absorb the absorb element spell out of the element of evil book. But yeah, the uh, nature cleric one will work on that. I guess the uh, the spell from the element of evil only works on you, but right. But what you're using it will work on someone else. Okay, that's cool. I get another ability score up. Yeah, you and your damn ASIs. Uh, so... Oh, wait a second. I thought you were a barbarian. Uh, I'm a fighter. He is not a barbarian. 
He's a I thought you were a barbarian for some reason because you rage. I do not rage. He did. He never raged. Why would I was I was thinking about split uh, uh, multi-classing the barbarian so I could get rage because that may have been that, it. That's not a bad idea because you take half damage from that if you take, hit third take, level with it. Yeah, I take half damage um, and a reckless attack I can get and reckless uh, is tricky because yeah, you hit somebody but you leave yourself wide open to take a hit. If it's a one on one and like it's really worth it for me. Because I can hit twice or three times eventually, and they yep. only attack me once. Oh, I can see the benefits of it, but like I said, it's tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky. It's a double edged uh, sword. Uh, I would also. I, I think. I think that was uh, more so if I got like great weapon weapon master, because then it would be minus five plus ten damage, but yeah. I would have advantage on the attacks too. Ah, uh, true. But the so only thing it, it it'd just be really nice. But the only thing I'm really thinking is we want, is we want a hot last to forget because I mean there's no chance we're getting there before word of you know what's going on in the city of Fool's Bluff gets there. I just don't want to get there after everybody's running from the town and having to pay yeah. like ten times what it's gonna cost the procedure. I will I would like to ship sail before uh before the fire. Right. So with well, no, that's not going to happen. I mean, we're, we'll we probably be just outside of Forget uh, when that pops. That's it. We're um, traveling. Well, if we're going, to, we're going to sleep now. We wake up Friday morning. We travel for a full day until Friday night. Can we just skip sleep? Get so to we Forget? Push, we push for Forget? I'm, I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Get yeah, there. We push for Forget and like see if we could get Get something that's planning yep. to leave already in the morning and pay ahead of time yeah well a lot of it depends on where the destination is too we may have to depending on what's going on we may have to change ships uh, one or two times yeah but, but I'm, I'm cool with that or even just use that ship to get to a bigger harbor which would go to uh, where the hell right okay cool that's a the plan then I like that idea, getting there before the uh, desert burns. That way, you know, that's a good that's a good plan, actually. All right. So it sounds like a plan is sleep, go as far as you can, ride up the horses, get there, and take the first ship out of there to anywhere that isn't your current location. Uh, well, at least somewhat productive, like yeah, in I mean, travel. I mean, go in the opposite direction of where we need to go. Yeah, we don't want to go to Three Sisters. We just want we want to make sure that our passage is book, uh, money is down before the desert burns, which means we're going to have to push hard through the whole next day. Mm. All right. Well, let's see. Well, I guess you didn't meet him, but the guy who lives across the ocean is that dragonborn with the gun. But that was yeah. uh, that was someone else. <laughs> that was Grimble. Yep. Okay. Not to get your hopes up, but I'm almost done. Yeah. It might be a little while. A little no, while for longer. Him, both of us. For both of you. Okay. Why do you think it's, why do you think it's taking so long? Okay, I, I, okay I'm going to step away from the mic then for a second. All right, man. Also, is it morning already? For me it to roll the not. 1d8? It is not currently morning. Can't forget uh, my charges. Well, um, well tech, uh, I just technically finished my wash, and I was taking first watch, if I remember right. Uh, I'm thinking I like the last one. No, he was first watch. Yeah, I was first watch. So next... Because I, uh, I brought it up, like, you wanted the guys switch, you want to keep it the same, and you get the side on the same. So he's yeah. still first watch. Okay. Um, so, I always uh, last watch is best. Yeah. Because I only sleep four hours. So it would be getting next. He'd probably just do a two-hour thing, and then you could take the rest. Yeah. That would be fully rested that time. Yes. I like how on that fight you said don't crit, and that's exactly when I critted. Oh, I have a higher chance to crit. Because well, he, of your, he uh, wanted to uh, get that shot, but uh, you know, like if it not, had it not been a creature that will come back to life, you know, he he wouldn't be able to get that soul gem. You know, be already yeah. be a dead already. 
So would uh, if he got like the killing blow, would it have been the same size of a gem then? It would have been the same, okay. because the, the main thing is that this creature is never going to actually die. You can well now you, it is. You will set on fire. You can do whatever you want, but the, its physical form is you know very resilient to most things. The main thing so, about it, it will it will look like it died. You can set it on fire, but it will respawn from its ashes and come back to you. That's pretty scary. Yes. Um, he, he's marked under the category on my list as the category is called Rage God. These beings cannot actually be killed. They will continue to come back. Okay, who'd you guys piss off now? No, we're talking about the thing we killed that turned into the soul gem. Oh, okay. Cool. The Death Slad. I think it's scary as hell. Yeah, but actually, I mean, I, I mean, Honestly, a lot, you know, thanks to us being prepared and Italian's uh, extra damage, he went down fairly quick. Mm -hmm. Magic items. <laughs> the ball made the difference. Even Italian wants magic items. Well, you just have to wait until June. It's not, well, Ju uh, what was it, June or July? Horatio? Uh, July, yeah. July? July? Okay. 7th July. 7 out of 7. Still a while. Okay. We'll, just, we'll just survive till then. <laughs> well, technically, if he died and had a new character at that point in time, that character would just walk into the park. <laughs> it's an insane magical life. Again. Yeah. I, I'm going to give my character a birthday that's going to be our next week. Yeah, so I get another one. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, your character doesn't matter. It's you physically. Damn it. Okay. Oh, well, my right. character birthday. Yeah, if you guys want to give your character's birthday, just go ahead. Like, we are keep, we are mostly trying to keep track of time as to why you guys move around per day. Okay. Uh, right now, it's still early. It's, well, it's mid-spring now. It's been a couple of I, weeks. If I wanted it to, like, resemble mine, I would want Rook's birthday to be in the winter as well. Like, mid-winter. We can do that. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. I'll just go with my original birthday. Let's see. I've got it's summer for me. <laughs> Yeah, you know as well. and your birthday is almost coming up. Your your character In birthday character is anyway. then. Yeah, three second level spells left. One Typically, the only reason, the only time I keep really close track of like what year it is in game is when someone's playing like an Arakor, where they have like thirteen years before they die. <laughs> Shit. Oh. You know they will live so fast. So fast. Yeah, their their lifespan's so very short. Is there a celebration or some type of specific calendar day that marks the halfway point of winter for this? You mean a solstice? Yeah, like a oh, well, yeah, winter solstice, I guess. In the game, there is a calendar. We just never really talked about it. Okay, so like, there's a winter solstice for this yeah. uh, game. Mm -hmm. Just curious. Why are you curious? Well, because because my actual birthday is the is January 30th, and like in, up in Canada, that is the halfway point of winter. Hey, how's so, it going? It's, it's lots of snow, actually. Uh, Warm and now everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> guys, one of Gideon's items that he happened to roll is a ladies' aid kit. It's literally tampons oh, and beauty supplies. That's well, gross. I'm going to go ahead and take that and give it to Ruck. <laughs> he needs it. Thanks. Mm. Big, bad half-orc that's afraid to put his hands in goo and runs away from danger. I have not run away from danger once. You know what? Anything. You know what? You put anything in a certain light and it can be made to look like that. I wanted to go help the Frog Brothers. Uh, I wanted to find out how to stop the desert from burning and... You took a quest that had to get us out of town fast. That thing, yeah, to thing. get rid out of fire. <laughs> yes, exactly. You're running away. See, you have fear in your heart. Out of character. Rook has a lot of fear. <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah. I remember from the old AD&D days uh, when I was DMing. I uh, used to have, I can't even remember the name of the book, but it had this thing on it called a boogie table where you'd roll randomly. It's like one to a thousand and you'd get a trait. 
I once had a uh, dwarf that was claustrophobic because of that boogie cape. <clears throat> the boogies were cool as hell. Just little things, but man, they could change your character up quick. That's cool. Yeah, a, a, a dwarf who was afraid to go underground. That was hilarious to play. I've done that sometimes, but I, I found that like players, unless they choose to take those traits, often run to search where they're playing a character they don't want to play. You know? Yeah. It's yeah. like I once had a character who was claustrophobic. Great. Now, now we're going to a dungeon that I enjoy crawling through dungeons. My character doesn't, though. Yeah. I mean, it, it's all in the RP and how you play it. I mean, sometimes it makes it fun. Sometimes it makes it a pain in the ass to try and get around these little things. Well, most of the fun stuff is a pain in the ass. A morning cup of coffee. <laughs> wow. My last cup of coffee was at 3 a.m. Because that was halfway through my shift. What do you do? Um, I'm a midnight stalker at uh, one of my Walmarts here. Oh, well, there you go. Cool. Easy job. Easy job. Nice benefits. Uh, yeah, man. I get 10% at Walmart. At every Walmart in all of Canada and the States. Well, damn, that adds up if you really think about it. Yeah, especially um, you frequent Walmart. You're getting a lot out of that. They also gave me a like an employee Walmart credit card. Oh, uh, how you get ten percent off of uh, food too? Hell, that's great. No, everything in the store, man. Yeah. Games like consoles, TVs, freaking flooring if I wanted it. Nice. Ten percent off of flat everything. Uh, yeah, and 10% off of groceries is really nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, long-term, that, that builds up so quickly. And uh, the credit card thing has its own, like, cashback thing. So, like, whatever amount you spend, you get a percent back. And because it's an employee one, I get a bonus percent to uh, can, instead of just the customer one. You're not going to be affected by the close downs, are you? Oh, hell no. Okay, good. Uh, my town... My town's really small. We ha now we have three WalMarts, but for the longest time we only had one, and it's the big one. It's the one I work at. It's yeah. gonna be this town's gonna be a crater before that Walmart's gone. You get live in a small town that has three WalMarts. It's the only city in Canada with a decreasing population. Really? Yes. Well, that says something about your little uh, world. Uh, we also have been murder capital about four years running. Damn! <laughs> that, yeah, that's definitely more noticeable than anything else you just said. Yep. <clears throat> okay. We, we are finally ready. Okay. okay. So, Wait, did I say see how long, how long it's been. It's been an hour. <laughs> it's been an hour. <laughs> so we're going to cut the stream. This is like a little extra. <laughs> and we're going to start back the stream immediately after. So see you guys in five seconds.